Hey folks, welcome back to Honey Money SG and this is another episode of Talking to Myself. I'm sure you have watched many videos talking about passive income and how to earn passive income and all that stuff. But you know, all these videos, it's not really true passive income because there's really no such thing as 100% passive income. It all involves a little bit of hard work on your side, depending on how much effort is needed. So if you really want to sit down and do nothing, I think that's quite impossible. It needs to have at least a little bit of monitoring on your side. So that's just a myth of creating passive income. But with that, let me just talk about four types of passive income ideas that you can adopt so that you don't really have to depend on one source, which is your day job. So let's start with the first passive income idea and that is interest from fixed income assets. You know, when we are talking about interest, it most likely means that there is some kind of borrowing involved because you lend money to a company or an institution or the government and in return because they borrow money from you they have to pay you back in the term of interest so one good example is like retail bonds right you know of the extra bonds launched by Temasek and expect it to hover around three to four percent in this kind of low interest rate environment although the rates are hiking up another example of a fixed income asset would be like the Singapore savings bonds which is not really a retail bond but more of like a government bond and is capital guaranteed although the interest rate is not really high um, on the 10 years range then you can expect to get like a 2.5% which I think is not too bad either at least it's on par with the CPF OA interest rate of 2.5% the last example of a fixed income asset will be like your insurance savings plan I'm not talking about those where you have to meet your financial advisor or insurance agent to sign those insurance link policy investment link policy not that one I'm talking about products like Singtel Dash because they are actually partnering with your insurance companies like Etika to actually offer these kind of fixed income products right they pay you a fixed interest rate of 1.3 percent per annum for the first year and if you were to buy their insurance products and add on then maybe they can bump you up to 1.5 percent and it's also capital guaranteed so you can go and use my referral link to sign up for singtel dash pad earning you 1.3 percent interest and capital guaranteed and you know previously in the low interest rate environment this kind of fixed income assets used to be really popular uh, because interest rates have been really low and there's really not other good places to go and park your money but with all the fed announcements of interest rate hikes then i foresee that there are going to be more products offering high interest use coming in the next few months so stay tuned for that as I update you guys on the channel. Next up, let's talk about crypto yield farming or staking. Now, for those people who have dabbled in cryptocurrency or you have invested in cryptocurrency, most likely you have heard of C5 platforms that are offering you interest when you deposit your crypto with them or you're staking it with them. And one good example is actually Holdenot, where you don't even have to stake the cryptocurrency. You just have to put your cryptocurrency into the Holdenot centralized platform. And that's how you get interest on your cryptocurrency currencies for example usdc and usdt they are offering nine percent as of the current rate for non-stable coins you can have bitcoin and ethereum hovering around five percent per annum which is not too bad right i think five percent just to put your bitcoin and ethereum there if it's not doing anything of course not your keys not your crypto we all know that but if you really want to have this kind of passive interest returns then i think putting a little bit in holder not is not a bad idea if you don't like holding up because of the name, then you can consider Celsius as well because Celsius also offer the same services to hold the knot just at a much lower interest rate. And you can also use my Celsius refer link to get $50 worth of Bitcoin when you sign up and deposit your first cryptocurrency into Celsius. But if you really don't trust this kind of small crypto companies, which are considered quite small, then I'm sure you can trust my next idea, which is FTX formerly Blockfolio because for Blockfolio, they actually give you 8% per annum interest on your first 10,000 USD deposited. Now your first $10,000 can come in US dollars or cryptocurrencies like your USDC, Bitcoin, Ethereum, any kind of cryptocurrency that is supported on FTX. So I think that's a really great place to park my first 10,000 USD, right? That's what I did. Just put 10,000 USD in the FTX, formerly Blockfolio. And then any deposits above the 10,000 limit will give you 5% per annum, which I think is not too bad either. If you have excess USD or other kind of cryptocurrency that is not earning good interest on other platforms then i think you can all deposit into ftx that's also no lock-in period so you're not staking for it and you can actually withdraw it out anytime of course that is if you believe ftx is a stable platform right because there's always such a thing called platform risk when we are talking about cryptocurrency 
So that's for crypto yield farming or staking. Let's move on to the third idea, which is dividend stocks investing. Now, in particularly for Singapore, I think it's a great place to invest in dividend stocks compared to the US. Because if you invest in dividend stocks in the US, you actually have to take a 30% haircut due to the withholding tax, which means 30% of the dividends of US stocks actually deducted and paid to the US IRS, their inland revenue, so that they can return the remaining 70% for you. Whereas if you invest in Singapore for dividend stocks, you don't really have this kind of dividends gains tax or even capital gains tax for that matter. So I think Singapore market is really a great place to invest in dividend stocks and we are most likely talking about banks and REITs. But do you know that other than banks and REITs, there are also other kind of companies giving you really good dividends. And one good example is actually Sheng Shong, which is the supermarket chain, and also like micro mechanics, which is like semiconductors. And if you really don't like this kind of cyclical industries, there's also a company known as Netlink Trust, which actually fix up all your fiber broadband networks in Singapore. The supply and demand should be quite inelastic, right? People really do need their fiber broadband. But do not take all this as financial advice because you have to do your own research before you even buy into these stocks. Now for banks and REITs in Singapore, they are hovering around 3 to 4% dividend yield as of the current date of recording. And then for other stocks like Micro Mechanics, Sing Shong, and even Netlink trust right i think you can expect around three to five percent depending on their current market value and in order for you to invest in singapore dividend stocks you need to have a broker right that's where my three recommendations of brokers come in those are mumu brokers tiger brokers and use mark brokers now before you go and compare which broker is the one to go for just go and use my refer link to sign up for all of them because they all have attractive free gifts when you sign up and deposit some cash with them and maybe trade a little and then you can get their very attractive sign up gifts up to one tesla share for mumu and tiger and then for use smart you get three bito shares now once you have signed up for all the brokers then i think going for use smart is one of the better idea because they do not have any minimum commissions for singapore stocks as well as their commission fees are really one of the lowest in the market right now for year 2022 in the future i don't know but for now i think use smart is really the cheapest even compared to interactive brokers for Singapore stocks. But I'm sure dividend stock investing is really boring for you guys, right? Because you all watch much videos about finance, about money, about investing. You all would think that dividend stocks are really boring and maybe you all want to go for growth stocks. But I'm not going to talk about growth stocks as my last idea, of course. I'm going to talk about rental and not only rental from property. There are other items that you can actually rent out to get passive income. But let's talk about property first, right? Because property is the really traditional form of asset. As long as you go and rent out your own bedroom or you go and rent out the entire house, you don't even have to manage much. You just have to manage the tenant. Of course, some tenants are really hard to manage and you have to be responsible for the maintenance of the whole apartment or the whole house because if there is any fixtures or any light bulb, you actually have to replace it as a landlord. Then maybe your tenants also fight with each other because they cannot decide who to use the toilet first, who is the one responsible for charging the electricity bill and not turning off the aircon, incurring high electricity bill for the whole house. So these are just some nitty gritty stuff that I'm sure everyone as a homeowner has experienced at least once in their lifetime. And the downside of property rental as a landlord is that you really need a high level of capital or you need a high level of leverage to actually own an investment property. Because we do have high duties and taxes for property owners, especially for second property or investment property, right? We call it the additional buyer stamp duty, which can be really expensive if you were to buy your second investment property. And not only that, the high leverage will also impact your total debt servicing ratio as well as the mortgage servicing ratio. All these are more for the property loans discussion so I won't go too much into it. But let's talk about some other ideas that you can rent out aside from your property. And one example is actually like luxury handbags. I'm not really sure of this market but I heard of people actually renting out their luxury handbags like your Louis Vuitton, your Gucci, your Chanel. Especially for people who really want to act high class for that few days, right? Maybe they have a gala dinner, maybe have a dinner and dance and they want to impress their date so they go and rent this kind of luxury handbags just to show off their social status for the few nights and i'm pretty sure they can do quite good as well so now your handbag no longer become an expense it become an asset because it has cash flow generating from the rental also if you have bought expensive stuff at your home for example like your camera gear you can actually rent out your expensive cameras or photography services right go and rent it out to people who just maybe want to use it for a few day shoot or traveling 
and I think those can be quite lucrative. And even for those car owners, if you are going for a long holiday trip away from Singapore and you have a trusted friend who happens to need to use a car, maybe you can rent out your car to this trusted friend or trusted colleague and maybe earn some side income along the way. I think that is another source of passive income that you can consider. So all these are all aspects of rental income aside from just renting out your property and be it bedrooms or the whole apartment. You can consider all these really expensive assets and now they are called assets, right? Because they generate positive cash flow for you. So yes, these are just some of my ideas of passive income, which is truly passive because you just need to have like a one-time setup and maybe you need to keep the system running. You don't really need to have much interference. It's not the same as side hustle because side hustle actually has a lot of interference needed and you need to have much more effort compared to passive income. And that's why the rewards given by side hustles is actually much higher than passive income. So if you really do want to check out my video on side hustles, then you can refer to this video over here where I talk really extensively about side hustles and my real thoughts behind it. With that, thank you for watching. My name is Christopher. This is Honey Money SG, Steering Young Adults to Financial Independence.